Approximately 1.2 billion people are overweight, and at least 300 million are obese. The World Health Organization says obesity is one of the 10 most preventable health risks, yet at least 3,000 deaths every year are linked to obesity. Obesity has become a public health problem in most nations, but studies have shown that there has been an exponential rise of obesity in developed nations, just like the United States and the United Kingdom. Obesity is linked to some long-term health problems, like premature death and illness, including heart disease, stroke, fatty liver, arthritis, and some cancers. Recent studies have shown that this rise in obesity could be linked to an increase in calorie intake, coupled with lack of physical exercise. Obesity results from an imbalance of the amount of energy consumed to the amount of energy spent on metabolism and exercise. It is well known that eating out may lead to excess calorie intake and increases the risk of obesity. This is because of their large portion sizes and increased energy density of foods. Fast foods are typically high in calories, fat, sugar, simple carbohydrates, and sodium. Fast foods reduce the quality of diet and provide very unhealthy choices, especially among children and young adults. Fast foods affect children and the youth even worse than adults. This is because most of the food is targeted at children. Studies show that calorie content of out-of-home meals that children consume was 55% higher than in-home meals. Let's just take a look at a few typical fast food items. The McDonald's Big Mac has 540 calories and 29 grams of fat. A medium fries at McDonald's has 380 calories and 19 grams of fat. The Burger King Whopper has 670 calories and 40 grams of fat. And their medium fries have 328 calories and 15 grams of fat. So to just eat a Big Mac and a medium fries is already 920 calories, and that does not even include the drink. People have many other theories as to why obesity isn't related to fast food, such as their hormones, genetic components, and secreted factors. Insulin is an anabolic hormone, not only in regards to muscle, but also fat. When an individual becomes insulin resistant, more insulin is secreted from the beta cells of the pancreas. Abdominal obesity is related to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Leptin is a cytokine like polypeptide produced by the adipocyte that controls your food intake. Leptin is produced proportionately to the adipose mass and informs the brain of, and of your fat storage. Obese people do not have a deficiency of leptin, but have higher levels of circulating leptin in the body. Obese patients theorize that there may be a defect in the leptin signaling the brain about the fat storage. In reality, this is not the case. Star of My Big Fat Fabulous Life, Whitney Thor, says the reason she is obese is because of polycystic ovarian syndrome, or PCOS. PCOS is a common endocrine syndrome disorder among women. Women with PCOS have enlarged ovaries that contain small collections of fluid. Excess hair growth, acne, and obesity can all occur in women with this syndrome. Whitney was a slender dancer her first year at college but by her second year, she was an overweight student. Women with PCOS have higher levels of male hormones and are insulin resistant. This causes the women to gain weight in the abdomen, abdominal area. Although many people think that fast food is a problem with gaining weight, these theories may also be a factor. To help stay a healthy weight, doctors from Stanford have come up with a few suggestions on what you should do. These include eat five to six servings of vegetables daily, Choose whole grain foods like brown rice and whole wheat bread. Balance the food you eat with exercise. Avoid a lot of fast foods since these are high in calories. And lastly, you should take about 15 to 20 minutes a day to do some calorie burning activities. You can always walk around the block or go up and down a few flights of stairs. I'm going to close with a quote by Andrew Lansley. We must not constantly talk about tackling obesity and warning people about the negative consequences of obesity. Instead, we must be positive. Positive about the fun and benefits to be had from healthy living. Trying to get rid of people's excuses for being obese by tackling the issue in a positive way.